It was her style, professional, genuine, humble, caring, that earned her reporting, and Shireen herself, the admiration and respect of millions of viewers. Shireen Abu Akleh was shot dead by an Israeli sniper on May the 11th, 2022. She was on assignment in Jenin in the occupied West Bank. After being rushed to hospital, she was declared dead at 7.13 a.m. From her colleagues, shock, grief, disbelief. Shirin Abu Akleh was a familiar name in the Arabic-speaking world. The large numbers that turned out for her funeral were testimony to how loved she was. It's rare for a journalist to have this kind of an impact. Known as the voice of Palestine, even in death, Shireen continued to tell the story of the Palestinian people. Israeli forces beat mourners at her funeral procession, almost causing Shireen's coffin to fall to the ground. These images prompted international condemnation from the United States to France and the Vatican. It appears the Israelis didn't want her coffin to be carried by the people or for the Palestinian flag to be flown. Shireen's family has campaigned tirelessly for justice, approaching the White House, the International Criminal Court, the European Parliament, the Vatican, and the United Nations General Assembly. The Americans and the Israelis said it was most likely Shireen was killed by an Israeli soldier, but that it was an accident and no further action would be taken. However, several independent investigations found that the shot was fired by a sniper and that Shireen was deliberately targeted. Shireen Abu Akleh was a high-profile Palestinian, but despite holding dual nationality with an American passport, despite being a well-known journalist backed by a global media network, and despite her family lobbying at the highest levels, one year on, there is no accountability for her killing and no sign that her killer will ever be brought to justice. Stephanie Decker, Al Jazeera, at Al Jazeera's headquarters in Doha. So let's speak now to Nida Ibrahim, who's live for us there in Jenny. Nida, so as we're saying there, it's been a year since Shireen was killed uh, by an Israeli sniper. What's the atmosphere like there today? Where are you and how will people be remembering Shireen? I am at the place where Shireen was when she was shot by Israeli soldiers as she was trying to report on a story on an Israeli raid here in Jenin at the outskirts of the Jenin refugee camp. She's remembered fondly. She's remembered as someone who didn't want to leave any story untold. She was here at 6.30 in the morning, very early on, trying to chase a story as the Israeli forces came here. She took refuge uh, in this tree when Israeli snipers targeted her, shot her even when she was wearing her press vest. You know, Shireen was someone who was keen to have the security of the team first and foremost before reporting. She's someone who knew the ground, who knew the story. So she wasn't putting herself in danger. She was someone who was trying to tell the story when she was silenced. Nida, what about uh, your own personal thoughts? I mean, you knew Shireen very well. How did her killing impact you and, and the work you're doing there on the ground? You know, Shireen, not just for me, but for many other Palestinian journalists, she was the role model. She was the person you would look up to, the kind of journalism you want to do, the accuracy, the dedication, the passion. She represented all of that, not just to me, to many Palestinian journalists, and in particular, the team that has worked for her for more than 20 years. And as I'm speaking to you now, there's an Israeli raid in another uh, city here in the occupied West Bank, in Tul Karim. So the raids, the Israeli raids that have been after Shireen was killed and during, they were, they're becoming more regular, they're becoming deadlier. So it's becoming scarier for us. You can imagine the tension for us as, as teams working on the ground when we know that someone we've worked with, someone who is that sincere, highly respected, someone who would 
uh, tell the story. She was a household name. And no one was held accountable when she was killed. You can imagine the stress we're under as journalists trying to tell the story. When I talk to my fellow journalists, they say that they feel scared, traumatized, and that their death won't even matter if something happened to them. Let me get a final thought from you, Nida. I mean, the Palestinian Authority has taken the results of its own investigation uh, into her death to the International Criminal Court, the ICC. Do Palestinians think that Shireen will ever get justice? Is there any hope that anyone will ever be held accountable for her killing? You know, many were saying when she was killed that justice for Shireen means justice for all the Palestinians that she's reported on because it shows the world the violations of the Israeli occupation that has been going on for decades. But if you ask people, really, did I believe that they were going to get any justice when it comes to her killing? The answer is no. Many Palestinians would tell you that Israel has been getting away with killing Palestinians for decades. And the fact that one year on, no one has been held accountable uh, gives Palestinians the idea that it's not gonna, that justice is not going to be achieved. So as many Palestinians would tell you, they feel that the uh, international community is even also complicit in the fact that it's allowing Israel to get away with murder. All right, uh, Al Jazeera's Nida Ibrahim there, live from Janine at the very spot. Uh, where Al Jazeera journalist Shireen Abba Akleh uh, was killed exactly a year ago. Nida, thank you very much uh, for your insight. Let's bring in Omar Badar. He's a Middle East analyst who joins us live from Washington, D.C. Omar, so uh, Shireen, uh, as uh, Nida was saying there, still nobody's been held accountable for Shireen's death, even though Israel says its soldiers may have killed her. Do you think anyone will ever be held accountable? Will there be justice for her? Look, I mean, there's no doubt about who's responsible for her murder. And it's quite frankly frustrating and quite shameful for the Biden administration to still be dragging its feet in terms of doing anything about this. An American citizen and a renowned journalist was killed by a foreign military, and that foreign military is funded by the U.S. government. And the fact that we have not seen any more meaningful action from the U.S. government right now um, is, is deeply problematic. I mean, when you think of uh, somebody like Evan Gerchevich, uh, who is being held in Russia, an American reporter for The Wall Street Journal, and how swift the American reaction was. Or when you think about Jamal Khashoggi, who wasn't even an American citizen, but a writer uh, who lived in the United States, writing for The Washington Post, and the way he was murdered uh, by the Saudi government, and how swift um, the condemnation and the conclusion of the investigation, okay. holding the Saudi government responsible for his killing. In the case of Shirin, we have a much clearer case of somebody who was murdered on tape by a sniper uh, and the fact that nothing has happened yet and that we're still waiting to figure out yeah. what really happened is, is just silly yeah omar it's an interesting point you make about uh, the u.s response to shireen's killing uh, as you say she was a u.s citizen yet washington uh, has put no pressure on israel the state department came out last year with a statement saying the killing was likely unintentional what more should the u.s what more can the u.s do at this stage there needs to be, you know, the Biden administration was pressured into allowing for an independent FBI investigation into the killing. But that investigation is moving at an incredibly slow pace, and it's inexcusable. It's obviously been politicized. And there needs to be pressure to get that investigation to conclude and for action to be taken based on the findings that we all know. Everybody knows that she was killed by a sniper, that she was deliberately targeted, that she was wearing a press vest, that a sniper hit her in the tiny spot that her head was exposed. All of this is pointing to a very clear and deliberate murder. And what needs to happen is meaningful accountability in the form of, frankly, beyond just Shireen, but, you know, you can't keep funding a foreign military that murders journalists. And the fact that the U.S. gives the Israeli military $3.8 billion every year in military funding is really inexcusable in the face of many crimes that were committed okay. against Palestinians. So, so, so let's just speak a little bit more than about meaningful accountability, because Al Jazeera said it would file a case uh, with the International Criminal Court. The Palestinian Authority, the PA, took the results of its own investigation to the ICC. But is that going to be enough to bring her killers to justice? I mean, has the international legal system failed, Shireen, do you think? I mean, you do have a fundamental problem here in that there have been resolution after resolution passed by the United Nations, investigation after investigation into Israel's crimes against Palestinians, 
and accountability never comes. And that's for a simple reason, and that is the fact that the U.S. steps in to prevent meaningful accountability for Israel. The United States has used its veto more than 50 times to block international accountability for Israel. Uh, it intervenes at, you know, puts pressure on the International Criminal Court to try to stifle investigations of Israeli crimes. You have a system in which the world's superpower is intervening repeatedly to ensure that Israel is a country above the law and that its crimes are never, you know, nobody's ever brought to justice for them. And that is, I think, what the, the fundamental reality that has to change in order for us to see the possibility for accountability for this murder. And as long as okay. we live in an environment in which the U.S. government can get away with this kind of um, favorable, you know, uh, exceptional treatment for Israel, putting it above the law, it's going to be very difficult to see accountability in this Omar, case. let me get a final brief point from you. I mean, the timing of the anniversary of Shireen's death is significant, isn't it? I mean, we're now seeing uh, an escalation of the violence between Israel and Islamic Jihad in Gaza. More Palestinians are being killed. Israel has a more extreme right-wing government, which many people say is intent on suppressing uh, the very collective Palestinian national identity. So what, what hope is there, then, uh, for Palestinians? What does the future hold for them, do you think? We have the reality right now is that we're marking the 75th anniversary of the Nakba. Uh, a lot of people think of the Nakba as a historical event in which Israel displaced three quarters of the Palestinian population and destroyed hundreds of villages uh, to create the state of Israel. But it really is not a historical event. It's an ongoing reality that this campaign of ethnic cleansing and mass killings of Palestinians is actually ongoing. Um, for, the, for the people who are experiencing this on the ground, the reality is very, very difficult, and I'm sure that it's difficult to find signs of hope. But the reality is the international discourse on this issue, um, the blatancy with which Israel is behaving, um, you know, you just can't hide it anymore. Okay. And there is a global awakening that is happening that I believe is going to lead to more and more international solidarity with Palestinians, uh, a growth of the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement targeting Israel. And that will one day reach a point to where Israel can't okay. just get away with this behavior anymore. It's, it's going to take a while, but we are on the path of getting there. Palestinians deserve freedom, and they are going to get it. Omar Badar, really good to get your thoughts and your analysis. Thank you very much indeed for talking to us, Omar. Thank you. Thank you.